Welcome back to the channel. It appears Hollywood finally found that elusive new audience they've been looking for. It feels like it's almost purely on accident, but now that they found them, I couldn't be more excited about this. And here to talk to me about that is my good friend Aaron Sparrow. How you doing, Aaron? I'm doing great, Wes. You know, they finally found one project that if they went woke, they wouldn't go broke. Absolutely. We are talking about Barbie, which ended up with $162 million in its first weekend of release. Above Sunday's already record-breaking estimate of $155 million, the Warner Brothers film starring Margot Robbie as the plastic fantastic doll declined just 9% from Saturday to bring in $43.7 million on Sunday. Those ticket sales rank as the biggest opening weekend of the year, besting the Super Mario Brothers movie. Barbie also marks the biggest debut ever for a film directed by a woman, overtaking Anna Bond and Ryan Fleck's 2019 blockbuster Captain Marvel. Now, we knew that Barbie was going to open big. In fact, we had talked about it. Even when Simu Liu was going out there, it appeared that it was going to have a big opening no matter what. But the big news is it feels like it's actually going to have a, a really big second weekend, and the drop-off isn't going to be that bad. Normally, if you get bad word of mouth, the drop-off goes down to like 70%, and then you know maybe that initial interest isn't going to be backed up with, with further enthusiasm, but it sounds like the chicks that, uh, that wanted to see Barbie liked it. Yeah, it seems uh, seems so. And believe me, I uh, as two, uh, two heterosexual men, I can't believe that we're talking about Barbie a second time, much less that we talked about it the first. But, uh, you know, I think that uh, the overall implications of this on our cultural scale are, uh, are pretty interesting, especially in regards to us saying, hey, stop trying to put all of this, you know, all of this crap, all of this intersectional feminism into boys' properties. You find and, and having it fail, you finally found somewhere that it worked, which is in a girl's property. And it uh, seems like they ate it up. So why don't you keep it over there? Shockingly, if you actually do a girl's property and you put all the girl power stuff in there and the gender identity and explorations and stuff into a property like that, the audience kind of just laughs it up and they enjoy it. Who would have yeah, thought? Yeah, it seems like, seems like they just laughed about it. Um, you know, I obviously haven't seen it. Uh, don't have any interest in it. Never had any interest in it. It's a Barbie movie. Uh, but... Uh, I did. Uh, I did talk to Joe Corallo, who went and saw it, and he said that uh, you know a lot of the a lot of the controversy over it was overblown. It was uh, was done like in a lot of tongue and cheek ways, and even I think that even uh, Ethan Van Skyver said that he didn't uh, he didn't think that it was necessarily woke. So you know maybe uh, maybe people were reading a lot into it. I did uh, I did talk to um, Anna, that Star Wars girl at uh, at San Diego Comic Con. And, uh, you know, she didn't care for it. Uh, you know, she thought that, uh, you know, it was uh, the, the movie kind of blew. But, um, you know, if uh, if this is what that audience wants, then you should give that to this audience and stop trying to force it on the rest of us. Yeah, yeah. When I made my original video, I said, hey, uh, you don't expect a feminist uh, message within a Barbie movie. What would you expect? Of course, this is the place where it ends up uh, making the most sense. And everybody should be drop jumping on this. Stop trying to make Star Wars a girl's property. Stop trying to make all these boys things like he man and everything into girls properties they should be focusing in on girls properties which apparently look like they could be billion dollar franchises we're definitely going to get a second barbie movie hopefully they make a kid skipper movie maybe we could get a kid sister remember that one yeah we can have a movie where she basically uh confirms that she was always better than my buddy which i think would be a really good message for the audience we could get an easy bake oven movie perhaps rainbow bright we could have a uh, what else is out there? Strawberry, Strawberry shortcake, shortcake yeah. live action. There's a lot of yeah. stuff that they could do so, and they could put the She-Hulk writers on all that stuff and it would actually belong there and it wouldn't uh, mess with people. They would like it. Yeah, look, I mean, you know, there's an audience for complete tripe like Grey's Anatomy. How long did that show last? It might still be going. I, don't I think know. it's still on. You think so? Oh, man. She's got to be like a, a desiccated corpse. Like 65 or something, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know... Um, Man, uh, you know, so there is a market for this stuff. You just have to stop trying to force it into places it doesn't belong. Yeah, I think this is probably like the best news I've thought. I think, uh, you know, as a guy that liked boys stuff in the 80s and 90s that I could have possibly imagined, you know, they'll stop messing with our stuff and start putting the stuff where it belongs. And I don't know, you're a toy guy. What other stuff should they have? Can they do a kid skipper? Uh, a, a movie or whatever wasn't that? I don't movie? know. I don't even know if it, I don't even know if a second Barbie movie does that well. I think that this is a novelty. I think that it's uh, it's you know one of those things where it just kind of like captured uh, you know the the don't damn things. you, Aaron. No, this thing is going to be a maze balls, <laughs> and this is where they need to put all the garbage over into the Barbie franchise. Uh, you know what? I hey, I I'm all for it. You know, just make it make it all. Do all these uh, girl power movies based on girl toy properties, and let us have He Man, and let it be He Man. You know, let us have GI Joe, and let it be 
traditional GI Joe. You know, give us uh, give us the things that we like and give women the things that they like. And, uh, you know, stop trying to societally engineer us into being the same amphorous, chubby, they, them entity that just, uh, you know, consumes. I am, I'm on board with you, Wes. Let's, uh, let's champion Barbie from the rooftops just so that we can keep that shit out of the things that we want. I do feel like they're making a mistake here, though. Obviously, uh, Barbie is per- performing phenomenally. But now they're going to do a shared Mattel universe. And it's not just going to be like gr- girls' properties. It's going to be like anything that Mattel has ever made. You're not excited for the Slinky movie? No, it just doesn't make sense. And they were like, they were like, yeah, and Rock'em Sock'em Robots. And I'm like, we already did that. It was called Real Steel. Yeah, and that was a good one because it was basically just over the top with with Transformers. It was cool. Yeah, it, uh, you know, not it, like oh, the Monopoly movie. Like, you know, there, there's th- there's things on the list of stuff that they want to make, like Viewmaster. Uh, it, how do you turn Viewmaster into a movie? Oh, I found a magic Viewmaster, and it. How do you make Monopoly into feminist propaganda like Barbie? That doesn't make <laughs> sense. Like, you know, that's not your brand anymore. Well, you need to get rid of Uncle Pennybags. You know that that white capitalist. He's got to go. And uh, you need to have a diverse woman of col- uh, of, uh, of color who's fighting against, uh, you know, Uncle Pennybag's disability. big organization. Maybe. You basically just go back big, to are 80s you? movies. You go back to you go back to 80s movies for uh, for Monopoly. You know, he wants to shut down the ski resort and build, uh, you know, build. Or he wants to shut down the halfway house and build a big industrial building. And we got to team together. And the only way to beat him is in the big ski race. That's how you do a Monopoly movie. Something like that. <laughs> uh, was Clue Mattel? Oh, I think Clue is Parker Brothers. Uh, okay, because there was yeah. actually a Clue movie, and it was somehow good. They made a movie about a board game that worked once. Yeah, depending on where in the country you saw it, the, the killer at the end was different, which I thought was uh, was interesting. I just don't see Uno the movie working out or Slinky, <laughs> but, uh, you know, Malibu Barbie? You know, make a Malibu Barbie movie. The, I think the, be... big, the big takeaway here is that finally, after years in Hollywood and years of being placed as a leading lady, Margot Robbie finally has a hit film well that's good for her it finally paid off warner brothers discovery probably stuck with her longer than they should have but it ended up paying off and they made a little bit of money after they lost a lot of bit of money with obviously with the harley quinn's and the birds of prey and the suicide squad and all that stuff so it should be interesting with all this stuff going on here and my my one real hope this is my real hope because i obviously do have a comic book focused youtube channel is that they realize yeah, superheroes aren't where we need to be putting, uh, you know, the, the Mag Visagios, the, 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 the generic Stephanie Riders, your Jerry Whitleys, uh, your Jerry Duggins, all these soy-based writers. They need to be writing Barbie comic books, and they need to be writing uh, comic books like that. They need to be doing a, a Rainbow Bright comic book, a Strawberry Short Kink, all that stuff. Get them off the superheroes because they don't know what they're doing, and the audience is not looking for that anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, put them put them over where the audience will lap that stuff up. You know, uh, mm-hmm. I think IDW had a successful gem in the holograms. Uh, you know, uh, comic book for a while. You know, gr- granted they changed everything, but it seemed like it was mildly successful for them. You know, it ran for a little while. Uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe now you try and do a gem in the holograms movie that isn't complete crap. You know, uh, or or it is complete crap, but they lap it up anyway. Archie would be a perfect place for all this stuff. That's why it works on the CW. Well, I mean, well, it didn't, though, after a while. It was, you know, nothing on the CW was ever successful. For more than two seasons? <laughs> you know, well, no, it was like, yeah, it got some buzz, but, like, it, it didn't really, you know, it wasn't a ratings bonanza. It didn't uh, didn't bring Well, nothing on the C- CW is a ratings bonanza. No. We, Lucky we to get 40,000 viewers. Yeah, we found out it never, it ne- the CW never made a dime. It just lost money. But uh, even with the, <laughs> the Flash, the Flash is such a good character, and he's never made money anywhere in entertainment outside of uh comics. could be animation good. like that made money nah, you, know, you know what yeah he was part of justice league and justice league unlimited those are wildly successful Absolutely. but he's never like been the flagship of anything it's kind of disappointing and then when so, they do give it to us they give it to us in the form of ezra miller and, and the garbage fire that was that movie the greatest superhero movie james gunn has ever seen sorry fatal j i know you're up you're you're gonna say i'm not a dc fan because uh because i'm calling out uh you know a dumb statement james gunn made but uh you know i like james gunn uh, I'm hopeful he can do something. I just think that, uh, you know, the, the brand is far too got the doubts. Yep, I got the doubts. Hey, you know, I'm more of a skeptical person. And my greatest hope is that, yes, Hollywood chases the money with this stupid idea that they've been trying to throw into boys' properties for the last 10 years and sticks it into girls' properties where it likely belonged anyway and tries to kick this thing off. Hopefully it trickles down into comic books, into animated projects and stuff like this. 
you know, hey, a live action Powerpuff Girls. I know they tried to make the movie and then they, they stopped filming or whatever. You should go and work on stuff like that. What are the chances that actually happens? And we get our wish and they just leave us the hell alone now. I don't think they can stop. I think that, you know, everything, every boy's property from the 80s, from the 90s is a is a cultural touchstone. And what they're invested in is they're invested in taking over the key nodes and infra infrastructure of boys entertainments, you know, cultural touchstones. So I don't think that it's going to go away anytime soon. I think they're going to keep trying. I think that they, you know, DEI uh, is going to demand that they keep having writers rooms that are, uh, you know, filled with intersectional feminists who are going to come in with their messaging and ruin all these boys properties continuously. It's just now they'll also have girls properties. Well, hopefully they ruin those just as equally because I believe in equality. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, they will. They will. Um, I want to, on the Barbie sequel, she needs to have an axe and a, and a tiger that she's riding on. And then the girls will be like, wait, I thought I was watching a Barbie movie. Why does this feel like he man? And they'll be like, right now you got it. Right. Yeah. It'd be nice if we, I mean, look, I think that uh, most guy, you know, most guys would go to see a Shira movie if it was, uh, you know, like a Red Sonia movie, like it should be, you know, we don't mind. We don't mind a woman kicking ass. We just, you know, want it to be true to the things that we love about ass kicking, you know, movies starring females or ass yeah. kicking properties that have women in them. You know, we don't Absolutely. want a bunch of modern day messaging in a movie about a barbarian from another, uh, you know, another time. We shall see what happens. I do want to say thank you very much, Aaron, for joining me. And uh, hopefully Hollywood found this new audience. They've been searching for him for a while. Comics has been searching for this audience for a very long time. And it turns out they were there. But they were just never interested in the stuff that they were putting it into. I hope that the tens upon tens of billions of dollars that they have lost pursuing this audience, I hope that the five hundred thousand dollars or five hundred million dollars that they pocket from this movie, I hope it was all worth it. It turns out, I guess I read the temperature of the room wrong. I thought everyone just didn't like the uh, you know, the weird gender identity stuff that Simu Lu was talking about. He was in the Barbie movie, and I was like. Yeah, it's going to have the big opening weekend, but it'll likely fall off once people find out this stuff is in the movie. Turns out with Barbie, pretty much impervious to that kind of reaction to it, and people ended up liking it. So I guess I'm going to eat some crow over this one, although I still say what Simu Liu said was really stupid and could have potentially destroyed his franchise before it started because he's an idiot. This is also late in the video description.